We don't have any living specimens, of course, um, but they did go extinct very recently. So here's what's going on. It's this very cool thing happening in this part of the world, the projects that I visited. Um, so they're taking adapter tortoises, which are abundant, right, which you can buy on the internet if you want to spend the money in a, a couple of clicks of your mouse, because they breed very, very well in captivity, much better than Galapagos do. Um, they're taking Aldabra tortoises and they're putting them back on islands where other relatives of Aldabras lived. Aldabras only lived on that tiny little island of Aldabra, but their close relatives were all over the place. So they're using Aldabras kind of as a proxy for these extinct tortoises. And the idea is that the tortoises may help to actually engineer the ecosystems of the islands. These islands have lots of other rare animals. Here's the pink pigeon which was down to seven birds at one time, and now there are about a thousand. What they're doing is putting these nearly extinct animals onto offshore islands, off of the main islands that people have settled and brought their rats and cats and so forth with them. This is um, Telfair skink, which also, also is a very rare animal that's been reintroduced. And here's an Aldabra tortoise. This is a research station. So they've been put onto these islands that they never lived on, but their relatives lived on, and they're completely changing the islands. They eat the weeds. They destroy the invasive plants. Um, they, they poop, and their poop turns out to be a place where ebony trees uh, germinate. So now suddenly the natural forest is growing back simply because of the presence of these tortoises. <coughs> where the tortoises come from, if you see tortoises for sale, adabras on the internet or anywhere else, they're almost, they're almost always from either the Seychelles or Mauritius. Mauritius is uh, a big island about the size of Maui, kind of looks like Maui. And there is an Australian biologist there who's begun a farm, which is called La Vanille. It's also a vanilla plantation. And it's also a crocodile farm for raising them for their skins. And he has about 100 adult aldabras that he's bought from everybody he can think of who has pet aldabras in this part of the world. He's brought them here, and they're producing hundreds and hundreds of babies every year. He keeps his place going by selling them and shipping them out all over the world as pets. But he also is planning to reintroduce them to islands all over the Indian Ocean. And he gets permission from the governments to do this, and then he creates whole new ecosystems uh, of islands. This is actually one of the larger ones here. It's about 900 pound uh, aldabracorus. Here he is. His name is Owen Griffith. Here are lots of newly hatched babies. There's a radiated, but he hatches these guys out in large numbers. And he raises them in pens. And then he does a kind of a unique thing. He sends them, oh, here's the largest one. That he, this is the largest tortoise on Earth, possibly. Uh, this is a tortoise named Esmeralda, who weighs 1,100 pounds. Oh, uh, which is because, you know, she's, yeah, he is a fat, yeah. captive animal. <laughs> but still is, is a really impressive big guy. So, one of the projects that's really, really intriguing is, so he goes to a nearby island, the island of Rodrigues, about 300 miles away in the Indian Ocean, where there used to be tortoises, and now they're extinct. And Griffiths, and I showed you this slide earlier, a lot of deforestation, but it's a beautiful tropical island. And Griffith bought uh, a canyon. He bought a small canyon right here uh, from some farmers, goat farmers. Farmers moved out. It's got natural size. Nothing can escape from it. And he's put about 100 Aldabra tortoises in here. And he's created a huge tourist attraction. They're breeding. They're doing what they naturally would do. He's now negotiating with the government to buy more land. And his hope is that someday they can have Aldabra tortoises simply roaming the entire island freely. And, you know, traffic would presumably stop for them, the adults. There only is one road in the whole island. And it's an island that a lot of Europeans go to for vacations. So it's kind of like the Hawaii for French and so forth. And the hope is it could be a tourist attraction that could generate revenue for itself. And it would also be a way to restore a little bit of the ecosystem and a lot of the tortoises to an island that they have not been on for hundreds of years. Here's the reserve. It's a natural reserve. Like I said, it's a canyon. And he's put in a couple of walls, and mostly it's just a very steep-sided canyon, and it's absolutely full of tortoises now. And it's really a neat thing to see. Um, I think they're about 150, and they're just reproducing naturally. They're just, they're just doing their thing. And his next step, as I said, is to try to get them out onto the rest of the island. So, yeah, that's, that's the story. I, I think that in the middle of a bleak picture of saying, well, these guys are being driven to extinction, um, it's just a nice thing that there are people dedicating their lives to restoring the parts of the world where they haven't lived in a very long time. And again, the, the, main, the main thing is that people who do captive breeding, some of you folks, if you're dedicated and you really you know, learn about one or a few species and dedicate yourself to them, you can actually make a contribution by producing more animals that then prevent us from having to take these guys out of the wild. So um, I'm done. I'll be happy to answer any questions you have. And thanks for listening.